Hi, I've got some exciting news today. Uh, I have the first parable, the first flat earth parable. But before that, I want you to look at this Bible. It's called the English Standard Version. And a lot of people will just use the King James Version, but I have been studying the scriptures for almost 40 years, and I have found the English Standard Version to be the best overall version to use for the study of the scripture. And I really recommend the one that I just showed you because it is a reference Bible and often you can go to a verse and then you can find many, many other verses that will explain uh, what that verse was about. So for those of you who are just now beginning to study the Bible, I really recommend that you buy that particular version. You will find that it's much easier to understand than the King James Version and in most places is just as accurate uh, or even a better translation. So uh, I, I really recommend it. Now I do have some exciting news today because I have the first flat earth parable to share with you. And it's very interesting to me because as you remember from yesterday's video, I spoke of how an old Christian friend had really challenged me to study the scripture to find parables dealing with the flat earth, if the flat earth were really true. Um, he still believes in a global earth and, and wrote basically a treatise trying to convince me and others to believe again in the global earth. But I, I felt my spirit quicken when I read what he said about if the flat earth idea was true, then there would be parables concerning the flat earth. And in fact, there is, or there are, I should say, and I believe I found the first one. Now recall that yesterday we looked at the first five verses of Scripture, which are, are utterly profound uh, verses of the Bible. And we're going to read that, that again in a second. But first I want to turn to Isaiah 46, verse 10. And uh, this, this Scripture is really just amazing. Isaiah itself is an amazing book. I find that it is one of my very most favorite books of the Bible. Isaiah 46.10. Let me just read this to you. It says this. I'll start in verse 8. Remember this and stand firm. Recall it to mind, you transgressors. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will accomplish all my purpose. Verse 10 especially I want to focus on, which says, declaring the end from the beginning. Yesterday we read the beginning verses of Scripture. This verse in Isaiah says that God declared the end at that point. That's what we're going to talk about today. Now we're going to go back to the very beginning and see what God in fact did say. Genesis 1 verse 1. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was over the face of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Verse 3, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Recall that yesterday I said that verse 1 speaks of the initial creation of the heaven and the earth. But verse 2 says the earth was without form and void. So then I took you to a verse in Isaiah that says that God never creates anything void. He never creates anything that is empty, formless, and void. And so when verse 1 says he created the heavens and the earth, and then the next verse says it was in chaos, you know that that's not the initial creation. I believe that it's between verses 1 and 2 that Satan and his angels fell. 
that's when they rebelled against God. And that rebellion created a catastrophic war that destroyed this earth as it was initially created. Yesterday I also spoke about a principle called the principle of first mention. That deals with words. When you first see a word in scripture, it's good to begin to focus on that word and then see where else it appears in scripture. One of the words that I really looked at was the word face or the word panim that we, we will see over and over again in scripture. And that's going to come in um, to today's teaching very heavily. And one word I did not mention yesterday, though, was the word ruach or the spirit of God, the spirit. The ruach can also be translated as wind, but you will also see, you'll see the wind and the spirit, of course, throughout scripture. Often, I'm sure many of you have gone up into a wilderness area, onto a mountain, or out by a river, or by the sea, and suddenly the wind blew, and you just had this feeling, oh my, God, that's God. Yes, it was. You know, we need to be sensitive to that. We need to begin to realize that God speaks to us in those ways. A still, small voice that we hear even in the wind. Now, before I reveal the parable to you, we're going to go to a few other scriptures. And the first one I want to go to is John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. John, of course, was one of the apostles. Uh, scripture says that he was Jesus' best friend, the disciple whom Jesus loved. And John is the beginning of John is like reading the book of Revelation uh, or the book of Genesis again. I often call the book of Genesis the book of Revelation because Genesis reveals so many truths about God that I feel like I'm reading the book of Revelation when I read the book of Genesis. Okay, the Gospel of John, verse 1, chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word. You see how this begins just like Genesis. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This identifies Jesus as the divinity, as our Father in heaven, as God himself. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Let's go to John chapter 8 now. John chapter 8, verse 12, says this. Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. He will not walk in darkness. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that a word we heard in the very beginning? And didn't we also hear the word light in the very beginning? The book of Genesis You know, Paul said that we all see through a glass darkly. The word glass is translated as mirror in this translation. We all see through a mirror darkly. Don't many of us talk about going down the rabbit hole? We're referring, that, that thing is referring to, that phrase is referring to Alice in the looking glass or Alice in the mirror. These days, we all th see through a mirror darkly. We don't see absolutely clearly. We're trying to do the best we can. There's a lot of people waking up right now. Some people have awakened to evil spirits disguising themselves as aliens, trying to convince them that they hold the truth, but they don't hold the truth. What I am speaking to you today is the truth. And remember, the foundation of God's throne is truth. 
and righteousness. Now, also remember from the beginning, book of Genesis, we read or we heard about the face of the deep. Well, in Proverbs 18.4, it says, A man's words are deep waters, but the fountain of wisdom is a bubbling brook. Have you ever tried to read men's philosophy, how dark it is, how hard to understand it is? Deep words, deep words that take you deeply down a rabbit hole to nowhere. Now let's consider what the first parable could mean. I actually think this is the second parable in the Bible, but it's the first parable dealing with the flat earth. Okay, so we're going to look again at Genesis chapter 1. Starting with verse 2, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Ruach, the Spirit of God, was hovering over the face of the waters. Now remember my example. This is my face. Think of my whole head as a globe. Top of my head, back of my head, bottom of my head, the face of my head. A globe, if you think of the world as a globe, there would be no one face, would there? But the beginning of the scripture speaks of the face of the deep. So we're looking at, we're looking at a surface. We're looking at a face. We're looking at the face of the deep that is in darkness, in chaos. But the Spirit of God is there. So, what is the parable? Well, in a parable, the face of the earth represents the face of man. Just as darkness was on the face of the earth on the first day of creation, so darkness is on the face of every man in the world until he comes to the light. God does not leave us alone in our darkness, but like in the beginning, the Spirit of God hovers over a man, leads a man or a woman, into his presence the spirit will work upon someone until they're ready to come into the knowledge of the truth and that's what this beginning parable is talking about remember a parable is a historical event that speaks of a spiritual reality so in the beginning you have a ruined earth an earth that is in chaos empty and void an earth where there is darkness only darkness darkness created by satan and isn't that what Satan has created today? Don't we now live in a world that is full of darkness? Aren't we, many of us, just now awakening from the darkness? Awakening to the reality of what we live in? How many of us have been really surprised to realize that our government has lied to us about everything? That they have been the ones. Our government has been the one that has created so many of the catastrophic events throughout our history. When you begin to research this, you will find that our government was behind most of the events that have caused most of the wars that have ever raged in this world. It's truly evil. Darkness has truly covered the earth again, just as darkness covered the earth in the beginning. But God as in the beginning, will not leave us to wallow in our darkness, just as he did not leave the initial earth in its darkness. Now the waters of darkness represent the life of death, the kind of death, the kind of life that Satan lives. His life is a life of death, a life of ugliness, a life of sin, debauchery, 
evil, lies, no truth. You understand what I mean. It's time now to awaken. It's time now to allow the light of God to shine upon our darkness. Then we become the spiritual reality of the first parable. God in Christ came to bring us light. The darkness does not understand it. And remember also the beginning. Waters covered the earth. Darkness was upon the face of the waters. But what is Jesus described as? Let's look at another verse. John chapter 7, verses 37 and 38. This is another one of the scripture that tells us who Jesus really is. Again, it's John 7, verses 37 and 38. On the last day of the feast, the great day, this is talking about the Feast of Tabernacles, which is in the fall of the year, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his womb, his matrix, will flow rivers of living water. We talk a lot about the matrix. We're just now escaping Satan's matrix. It's time to enter into God's matrix, into the matrix of light and truth, of truth and righteousness. This, my friends, is the first parable of the flat earth. Blessings to you. I pray that this word enters your hearts and brings you into a new revelation of our Creator, our Father in heaven, Yeshua, the only God, the only Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen.